In this video, I want to walk you through a CFA style question on the initial measurement of inventory. This may seem like an easy topic. We're going to figure out what amount inventory, when it is first introduced into the balance sheet, should be presented at. And although this seems simple, there are a few rules which you must understand. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, do keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want you to have a go at. During the first quarter of the year, Brody Enterprises manufactured 1,500 units of finished goods, incurring the following costs in connection with the process. And we've got a list of costs or expenses, including raw materials purchase price, raw materials uh, freight costs, that's the cost of transport, direct labor, Production overheads, those are the indirect costs associated with production, such as, for example, electricity, water, etc. Storage of finished goods and upfront commissions paid to selling agents to identify potential buyers, obviously for the products being um, uh, produced here. If the 1,500 units remain unsold as at the end of the quarter, what is the cost at which they should be included in Brody's inventory balance and three options A, B and C follow. Okay, so we know what costs have been incurred. Now the question is, which of those should be included in the inventory's initial measurement um, when it comes into the balance sheet? And the general rule is that initial measurement of most items that enter the balance sheet should be done at cost. However, not all of these costs will be included. So what does cost actually include? So let me write includes over here and list the items that indeed should find their way into the initial book value of inventory. Well, this should include the cost of purchase. So how much did we pay for the actual thing? That's pretty obvious, isn't it? Now, the next one is going to be the cost of conversion. So how much did it cost us to convert, in this case, the raw materials into the finished goods? And we did incur some, you know, di direct labor costs, production overheads, et cetera, et cetera. And the final item here is going to be um, other costs incurred in bringing the inventory to their present location and condition. So other costs incurred to bring the inventory items to its current location stroke condition. So if, for example, we purchased raw materials, well, that's a cost of purchase. However, in order to bring those raw materials into our company into our factory whatever we need to we needed to incur some transport or freight costs so those would also be included then we converted the raw materials into finished goods that's that involved labor production overheads let me stop there because i want to now write what we don't include so what this cost actually excludes this is really important because if you get a question about this in the exam, there for sure will be some items here on that list which you should exclude from the cost of, initial cost of inventory. And that will be two things. Abnormal costs, meaning wastage. For example, if instead of using one portion of material, you had to use two portions because the first one um, was wasted due to some mistake or, you know, inadequate processes, etc., etc. Well, you don't count the materials twice and you don't say your inventory, initial inventory value is double its normal amount. That's due to wastage. The second item is going to be storage costs. Those should not be included in the value of inventory. So storage costs out, and we do have storage costs of finished goods uh, over here, with one exception. Uh, if storage is necessary to bring the inventory to its current location stroke condition, yes, it should be included. When would that happen? If you've got, for example, maturing goods such as spirits, wine uh, would be one example, or whiskey, which due to storage gains in value or changes its condition. 
Same thing for things like cheeses, which require an, an, a period of storage in order to get them to their ultimate condition in which they are ready for sale. So only in those cases, so let me write, unless sort of part of production process or a necessary part of the production process, uh, unless that, that's the case, we exclude storage costs. And one final item, which I'm going to put in at the very bottom, that's going to be selling costs. The fact that you pay somebody or you incur costs associated with finding buyers for your inventory doesn't make the inventory value in your balance sheet in any way grow. Right, because that's not about bringing the inventory to its current location or condition. So let's take a closer look at these items. We've got raw materials purchase price, 24.4. That's definitely going to be included in the initial measurement or initial value of the inventory. So that one, definitely a yes. Okay, then we've got raw materials freight costs. That's all about bringing the raw materials to the uh, current location, our factory or whatever production facility. That's another 4.5. Then the direct labor costs associated with converting raw materials into finished goods. Another yes over here. So I'm going to say 48.7 for direct labor. Then we've got production overheads, things like electricity, water, etc., or the depreciation of property, plant and equipment, machines, um, I don't know, production facilities, another yes, so 61.2 over here. And then after those costs have been incurred, I'm going to draw a line and say this and this are going to be those items of costs which the company did incur, but they should be excluded from the inventory value. Um, i.e. the value at which the inventory is reported in the balance sheet. So storage of finished goods, absolutely not. And upfront commissions paid to selling agents, another no, because that's part of selling costs. That has nothing to do with the cost of production of the finished goods. So we've got the items, 24.4, 4.5, 48.7 and 61.2. And if we add this up, we should get an answer of 138.8. I had to look at my notes over there. Should have taken out my calculator, but I've got my notes where I calculated it earlier. And this, as you can see, corresponds very nicely to our answer over here, answer B, which says 138.8. So that's the answer to the question.